Hey, good morning, guys. It's Amy. Um, today is July, Saturday, July the 15th. And it is not even 6 o'clock in the morning. Today's hot mess is brought to you by Shark Week. <laughs> it is day two of Shark Week, and I am miserable. I did not sleep at all last night. I was up every two hours having to change my lady business because it is so heavy. <laughs> it is so heavy and I am miserable. So I'm in my basement today, um, drinking a coffee, sitting on a towel because it's one of those days. Who knows what could happen? I might cough, I might sneeze, and like, <sighs> and you can see I'm breaking out. I have zits all over, but that's what's up. I haven't done a video in a really, really long time, um, so I thought I'd come to you today since I can't sleep apparently and talk to you guys about what's up. So. Um, Let's see. I don't remember the last time I talked to y'all. Um, things are good. I'm just miserable today. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, I think last time I talked to you guys, I was telling you a little bit that um, work's been busy for me. Right? I have, I've been doing some traveling, which is fine. You know, it's I've done some traveling for work. I did some traveling for for pleasure. Um, I went to Las Vegas. Have I talked to you since I went to Las Vegas? Um, I don't think I have. So I went to Las Vegas with a bunch of friends um, and it was great. So typically every year we go to Las Vegas and kind of do the same circuit over and over again. But this time we went with a new group of friends, friends that that I that we've been friends with a really, really long, really long time, except we've never actually gone to Vegas together. We always seem to go separately. And there was a, there was a group of us. Um, a, a few different groups are kind of can were able to meet up there um, for this trip. So <clears throat> we got to do some things that we don't typically normally do. So I mentioned before that I was going to do a helicopter tour, which is something that I couldn't do when I was at my heaviest. Um, and we did it this time and it was r amazing. It was amazing. Um, I never realized that going on a helicopter was something that was on my bucket list because I don't know why, you know. You, you know, with with helicopters, there's pretty strict um, weight requirements. Like, I think typically you've got to be under 250 pounds. So we booked this helicopter tour, and um, a car came and picked us up at our hotel and took us to the hangar, which is near McCarran Airport in Vegas. And um, they kind of checked your group in. There was four of us in my group, and then there was another two people in the helicopter. So they sit you on these, they make you stand on these big plates, and they weigh you, right? Um, because they have to figure out where they're going to put everybody in terms of equal weight distribution on the helicopter. And um, so there was a group of, like I said, there was four of us in my group. Um, and they don't they don't tell you how much you weigh. They just make you stand on this, on this plate and then the, they just take your weight and they say, okay, next person, Amy, you come up, you're next or whatever. So, um, but we had to give them... Before, when we made the reservation, we had to tell everybody, you know, what our weight was and all that. And I think that the limit was 250 pounds. And if you're above 250 pounds, then you would just essentially have to pay for an extra seat um, on the helicopter. But within my group of four, so we had to give our, you know, our estimations in terms of our weight. And uh, I wasn't the heaviest one. Uh, there was a girlfriend of mine that was going to, and she, she weighed more than me. Which was strange because, you know, my entire life I've always been the fattest one, you know, in the group. Um, I've always been the biggest one, but, so that was kind of wild. Mm. So, um, anyway, so they weigh you on this plate when you're there, and then you kind of wait in this area, and then they go out, give you the, the safety spiel, and then... That part's boring, you probably don't care about that. And then basically we took off, so they put us in the helicopter, they took off, we went over... Um, Lake, uh, we went over the Hoover Dam, we went over Lake Mead, we went over the Mojave Desert, uh, we went over and up into the canyon, and then we actually sat down inside the Grand Canyon, uh, where we probably had about like 30 to 45 minutes, they gave us a little picnic and some champagne, 
and uh, we took a bunch of pictures and then we took off again from there and went back over the Mojave Desert, although in a different direction. And by this time it was sunset. So the sun was setting. Um, so we got some really nice, it was very, very pretty. And then we circled the downtown Vegas area. And then we came up the strip at night when all the lights were on and then we touched down and then we left. So I think from door to door from like hotel, oh, and then the, then the car took us home back to our hotel. So I think from door to door at the hotel, the entire thing was like, three and a half hours um excuse me and um the views were incredible it was just, it was an amazing experience it was very smooth um if y'all are ever going out to las vegas and you're thinking about doing that or you know somebody who is i would highly recommend sundance helicopter tours because they were awesome 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 um experience of a lifetime mm. okay so we did that trip, which was great, and then um, and then I had some friends visiting here from Canada for a little while, and that was kind of cool too, of course. Um, yeah, for those of you who are not Canadian and might not know, so Canada has its own Independence Day, I suppose, um, which is just a couple of days before the 4th. It's on July 1st every year. So this year was kind of a big year. It was 150, so Canada is 150 years old, so big milestone. Um, and I've been incredibly homesick, incredibly homesick. You know, I see all the stuff on Facebook from all my friends and family back home, and I really wanted to, you know, participate in some of the events um, and the festivities for, you know, Canada's big 120, or 150, excuse me. But although I couldn't be there, I had some of my Canadian friends that came down um, that day, and they stayed for a few days. And so that was really, really good. It was good to see them and get a dose of home. <laughs> Uh, for a few days and so that was about that um, next week I'm actually traveling to Canada it was kind of an unexpected thing my father has just um, he's recovering from knee replacement surgery so he's you know getting around okay he can you know for the most part take care of himself but I'm really fortunate in the sense that I have a job where I work from home um, so I can really essentially do it anywhere um, so I was talking with my boss and I said, Hey, is there going to be any more travel coming up between these dates? And he said, no, probably not. If, and even if there is, you can, you know, we'll figure out and you can just work remotely. Um, so I'm going to go there and just, you know, stay at my dad's place and work out of there, um, for about two weeks. So, I mean, like I said, he can get up and kind of move around, but I would like to, you know, do his laundry, keep his house up, do some cooking for him, you know, take care of his grass. He's got a pool and do some pool maintenance, just stuff like that. So he doesn't have to, you know, for people who have pools, you might know that, you know, um, he doesn't have a saltwater pool like I do. He has a chlorine pool. So he's got to like bend over a lot and like test the water and all that. And he can't do that when his knees all jacked up. So I want to go there and help him a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do that. So with all of the stuff that's kind of been going on, work especially has been, you know, um, stress, stressful. Uh, I can't even blame it on work. I had, I, I was smoking cigarettes again. I quit for a long time. I've been struggling. I, you know, I've been a smoker for a very, very long time and I had started again. Well, I've quit again for like the hundred millionth time. I've quit again. Um, and I've put on about about seven pounds um, because I can't smoke. So then I eat a little bit, and then so anyway, I quit smoking. I did put on about seven. Actually, I put on about ten pounds, but I'm starting to lose again because uh, I'm starting to like rein it back in. Um, so it's just you know it's weird just trying to find out an equal balance of like how how to deal with stress, how to deal with stress when you you can't smoke when you're trying to make good choices, you know, in terms of eating. But when I was quitting smoking, I was miserable. <laughs> I will definitely tell you that. And I did get my protein in every day. Um, but I could give a shit about carbs. If I saw a carb and I wanted it, I ate it. I put it in my face hole and I ate it uh, because it was better than putting a cigarette in my face hole. So I don't know if it was a wise move, but got me off of cigarettes and um, I'm okay with that so 
And I think I've got like the nicotine, well, the nicotine is definitely out of my system now and it's just trying to break that psychological habit. And I think I've got a pretty good handle on that. I've been in a few situations um, since I quit smoking where I would really want to smoke, like hanging out with some friends or um, being outside by the patio or, you know, by the pool or whatever places where I'd want to smoke. Um, and I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on it. So, you know, back on track, you know, limiting my carbs again, still getting in my protein and my exercise and all that. So um, some of the weight that I gained back um, from quitting smoking is starting to come off now, which will be good. Um, it was funny last week. So I was like, you know, it was, work was incredibly stressful and had a little bit of a meltdown one day, but I did not smoke. I did not smoke. And so I'm proud of myself on that front. And then lo and behold, yesterday I get my period. I'm like, oh, I knew I wasn't a weak ass bitch. I was just, well, quitting smoking and probably PMSing. And so that's why, <laughs> that's why I had my meltdown. <laughs> and I just like my poor husband and some of my poor coworkers. I just had like a little bit of a meltdown. Something happened, something triggered me and it was just like Mount Saint insanity erupted and I just like spewed molten crazy all over everybody. So awesome, awesome. Um, I will say, so I mentioned that I was doing some traveling for work uh, a while ago and I haven't done that in a little, I had a few, I've had a few weeks off so I've been home for a while. But it's interesting. I don't know if I've talked about this. If I have, I'm sorry. Um, I'm still, it's weird. So I never used to like traveling for work. Never. You know, the travel portion itself, you know, traveling when you're, you know, over 400 pounds is very uncomfortable. You know, you sweat a lot and, you know, you're self-conscious about that. Um, traveling on airplanes and all that stuff. It's just, it's not fun. It's not comfortable. Um, but I've also found that professionally, as well as personally, I have more confidence now that, you know, I'm, you know, like 190 pounds. Um, you know, I've lost like over 210 pounds. Um, and so I have this new sense of, of confidence. And I don't even realize that it's happening. But for example, if, in a, if I'm in a conference room or I'm talking with a number of people, I have to stand up and make a presentation. You know, when they're looking at me, they're not like, we see you fat girl. And they don't just identify me as the fat girl. Like, so I feel like when I'm speaking about something, I have some authority on it. And I feel like they're actually hearing the words that are coming out of my, my mouth, as opposed to just like visually, that's all they can see is obesity. Um, so I have some new confidence when I'm there, when I'm up there and I'm walking around, I'm talking to people, I'm not sweating as much. I'm not sweating at all. Um, you know, I feel like my clothes are fitting nicely on me and, um, People just take me more seriously, I suppose. Um, um, interestingly enough, too, let me get you closer. <laughs> um, I find that I'm getting some attention. Um, not in like a lewd or a salacious way or anything like that, but there's... Um, if there's such thing as professional flirting, you know what I mean? Like I, you know, I just, there's been a couple of situations where there's been a little bit of, you know, flirting or getting a little bit of attention. And like I said, it's not necessarily, you know, creepy or anything like that, but it's, it's nice. And, you know, my husband and I have been married for a very long time, you know, over 10 years and we love each other to death, but you know, it's been a long time since I, I've had, you know, been flirted with by somebody who's not my husband. And, um, and the attention is nice and if, you know, not to be a dick about it, but you know, it's, it's very nice and it, it's very flattering and it feels nice. Um, yeah, so it's weird. Um, so that's kind of a new experience that I hadn't really, um, anticipated, <laughs> I guess, you know. That was kind of cool. It is kind of cool. It makes me feel good. Like you said, it, like I said, it get, kind of gives me some confidence. Confidence. So um, that's about all that's really happening. Like I said, it is now six o'clock on Saturday morning. I 
did not sleep very much last night. Like I said, I was up every two hours having to change my tampon and my pad because it's just, it's day two, very, very heavy. So I imagine I'm just going to hang out down here in my basement on my couch today, maybe play some video games and um, probably catch a couple of naps, <laughs> do some snoozing since I didn't sleep very well last night. So I'm just going to take it easy today. Uh, like I said, I'm going to Canada next weekend for two weeks. My husband is not coming with me, unfortunately. Um, but we have, you know, Skype, we have FaceTime, we can talk on a regular basis. But I probably do need to do some things around here before I go. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. And I really hope all of these zits go down, but I suspect that's all part of Shark Week. <sighs> I got nothing else to say, guys. I'm going to go play some PS3 or PS4. I don't even know what it is. And uh, maybe catch a nap. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of update in terms of shit that's been going on with me. Um... That's about it. Catch y'all later.